This is Peter Burns. Next month, Don Williams and I will be presenting a short course on color management for cultural image capture as part of Archiving 2019. The conference has a full program of short courses organized, as you can see here, in four tracks. Uh, the one we'll be talking about here today is on color management. Our course at the bottom there is complemented by two others that are presented by David Weibel, Introduction to Color Measurement and Advanced Concept in Color Measurement. Don and I will also be presenting a course on scanner and camera imaging performance here, um, but I will primarily talk about the color management course today. Well, let's start with the main topics covered. We'll be discussing for color image capture, accuracy and variation of color capture. We'll talk about current color management methods that are used and how they're applied in libraries, archives and museums. So here is an example showing the variation that might occur during uh, scanning of objects for a collection, either due to variation due to lighting conditions or different camera setups and so forth. So confronted with this, uh, how do we measure that? How do we control it? And does this change? When I, in my monitor, when I have a black background, it tends to uh, amplify the differences in the dark areas, as we would expect. Well, here's color management in a nutshell. Whether performed in-house or in a service bureau, how can we, A, understand color image capture and its variations between cameras, labs, day-to-day, -day and so forth, and then how can we control or fix them? And can we do this in a way that meets the imaging goals consistently? The answer to how can we do that is, one, to understand the variation and the color quality. We need to measure it and to control it, we need to adopt consistent practice and then correct or fix what we can and we need to. How do we measure color imaging? Well. For institutions where color information and imaging needs to be traceable to the object, we use color test charts to evaluate color accuracy and its variation. We see uh, a couple of examples there where we're using uh, color targets alongside the uh, collection items to be, to be imaged. An important color description is provided by C-Lab, which is used as a basis for color accuracy uh, measurements and, and tolerances. It's an approximately visual color space. Here's an example of an evaluation of color accuracy for capture using a test target alongside the object. The color difference from the ideal is presented as a delta E value derived from C-Lab, and this is consistent with imaging guidelines from both the FAGI um, a US initiative and metamorphosa in the Netherlands. And this is how that is done. We compare known C-Lab values with those derived from the image, the test target, and um, calculate a color difference for that. And this is what's done by the automated tools that are associated with uh, particular test targets. So if that's how we evaluate the color accuracy, how do we manage color? Well, here's a look inside. We use color matching methods and profiles to transform from input signals, scanners, camera, and so forth, to, to common color spaces in order to provide either matching or controlled color images on displays, printers, and so forth. Color profiles are important. Those are the data or data sets that characterize the input and out of the output devices or the color spaces into which the signals are transformed. These are standards from the International Color Consortium and are often called ICC color profiles. If there's interest, we generally would like to show how to build an input color profile to provide the correction 
or color correction or calibration tools. Then we'll give a few more details on how to use the color profiles, pros and cons of uh, using custom profiles versus standard ones. Well, this is the end of our discussion of our short course. And where to next? It's off to Lisbon to discuss these things.